right, so welcome to part one of my mosaic soap. Um, I am going to attempt a scene that has birchwood and cardinals, which I will, you hopefully will see that at the beginning of this because I'll have done it. Um, but this is stage one. So I'm first gonna make the actual birch looking tree pieces uh, in my slab mold. And I'm making kind of a, a large batch of it because I feel like I'm gonna have to cut more up as time goes on. Um, so it's gonna be predominantly white um, with the gray and black, you know, kind of swirled in. Um, and if you notice, I'm not using goat milk right now and that's because I'm using a recipe um, that isn't my normal recipe. Um, this is actually my normal embed recipe that I've developed and it has beeswax in it and it goes, moves kind of fast. Um, so I don't want any other complications with it. I just want it to be soap. So um, that's, that's the plan. Um, I'm scenting it with Birchwood Ode from Brambleberry um, and then coloring it with black oxide, a mix of silvers um, and some sparkle for the silver gray part and then titanium dioxide also from Brambleberry. So hopefully this will work. All right, just readjusting that real quick. Better here, better, all right. So this moves fast. Um, I don't wanna freak you guys out, but it really will move quickly. And I've actually never made a batch this big before, so I'm not, 100% sure this is going to work. Um, the only thing that's in that lye solution is just um, distilled water and some sodium lactate. Like I said, I didn't even want to add sugar. I wasn't sure what it would do. You can see it's much darker than my normal recipe. as much as I'm going to blend that part. Probably going to need more titanium dioxide than I have there, but that's what I have to start. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, this fragrance does not discolor, so I'm going to add it to the entire batch. Um, and it does behave well, so that'll hopefully help me um, slow this down just a little bit. I specifically made this recipe to harden quickly. Um, so there is a water discount, um, but it's basically just a lot of solid oils. I think the only non room temperature solid oil in there is castor oil, which isn't helping much. So let's pour off. I have a fly in here. That's really bothering me. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I can see it and it's making me mad. Black and then gray. So far, so good, but I'm not going to assume that I'm gonna have this much luck for very long. Um, Cause I did add a little bit of extra water than I normally do, but not a whole bunch. Cause like I said, this likes to scoot. Um, but that's the point, right? Cause I'm gonna try to get most of this done today. Um, it's actually pretty this very second, which um, has been the first time all weekend. It's been beautiful. We've had a little bit of a um, hurricane hanging out um, and not on our coast. It's on the West Coast. I'm on the East Coast of Florida, but it's still enough to um, annoy everybody. I guess this is the word for it. God, that beeswax makes this so dark orange. It's pretty. And I'm actually using beeswax today from um, my friend Sierra. Sierra's bees, Sierra's honey. And I'm, yeah, I'm gonna have to add more titanium dioxide to this silver because again, the problem with the really yellow batter is you have to fight, fight it to get the color you want. But the black should be beautiful. And that is, fly. Ha! I win. Alright, I'm 
I'm gonna have to go wash my hands now that I killed that fly. I, I, I gotta wash my hands. Hold on, hold on, please. Okay, sorry, it was just really skeeving me out. I don't mind, I don't mind the part where they're dead, but I do mind the part, I do mind the part, I do mind the part that they are um, flying around. Sorry, that was my daughter coming in to see what mommy was doing. If you heard the door in the background there. All right, those two are good, or this one is good. Let's see how much more titanium dioxide I gotta add to you to get you white. Ooh, a whole bunch more. Which isn't bad because it'll help it stay fluid. So I've mixed my titanium dioxide with olive oil, which is usually part of my recipe. And yes, I'm adding a caboodle of it um, because I know my time is limited and I don't, I don't have the luxury of my usual well-behaved recipes. So I'm gonna bring this gray up a lot lighter with the titanium dioxide, which will add the opacity and get rid of some of that yellow. And then I'll bring it back down again with a little bit of the uh, activated charcoal. Which it probably doesn't make much sense right now because it just looks yellow, but just trust me. All right, let's see how you look. You're still really yellow. All right, hold on. All right, sorry about that. My daughter needed me and then I was realized it did not hit start again. Hooray. It's just the kind of day I'm having today. It's all right. All right, so I'm just loosening these up and I'm gonna pour the white in and reserve a little bit at the end so I can help make my birch trees look more birchy. And I went ahead and added kind of an obscene amount of titanium dioxide to get that to behave as well as, or to get as white as I wanted it to be. I didn't think ahead and think, gee, fragrance oil is kind of yellow and that uh, soap base is gonna be kind of yellow. Trying to get this to go all the way down and all the way through. That worked. Okay, now for the gray. Probably in the mold, Whitney, that would be great. All right, so now I'm gonna take a, a page out of one of our previous challenges. I'm just gonna kind of swirl this back and forth a little bit. I want it to look like birchwood. Alright, so I think that's uh, minus the part where I get it all chunky on the sides. This is, you can see the parts that are wanting to set up quicker. They don't have as much titanium dioxide. Just want this a little bit more. Swirled, I 
I should leave it alone. All right, so I'm gonna pour off the rest of this and uh, I'll be back. Hi everyone. So this is the quick intro into making this soap. Um, I wanted to kind of plan it out and get everything together, but as you'll see in a minute here, I end up going a little crazy with the cocoa butter, uh, which I had melted. Um, and I painted them on first. And then after that, I, uh, yeah, I just got bored and dumped it all in there. So um, I regret this later in this video, which I will show you. Uh, but this all told probably took me at least a solid hour, I want to say. I've sped this up like 40 times um, for the entire part of this editing video where I'm just, you know, putting all the little bits in. Um, and I'm trying to match it up to the picture and I will put the picture up in the corner so you can see it. But basically I wanted to have the same feeling as the picture of the birch trees and the cardinals. And that was really the focus. This was a print I found, um, I want to say on Pinterest. And I just thought it was really, really pretty. So um, hopefully you can see the same image that I got. Um, I made the soap dough for the cardinals and um, molded them all each by hand. There's no mold, I just handed them all. So here is the reveal. This is in real time. Are you ready? All right, here you go. Ta-da! Hi, everyone. So we are going to go ahead and pour the, uh, the inside of my mosaic soap for this month. And I am using a blend of two scents again, um, Ode Wood from Nurture Soap and Birchwood Ode from Brambleberry, which smells amazing together. They behave great and they don't discolor. So, and then I am trying to mimic this is my inspiration picture with all the cardinals and the birch trees. So you can see it there. And I am using a blend of blues from Nurture Soap and a little bit of titanium dioxide. So that being said, let's make some soap. So as per usual, I'm gonna go ahead and add my lye water solution to my room temperature oils. Everything's room temperature. Um, so that also has active um, raw silk, uh, sodium lactate and powdered sugar, as well as made with distilled water. And then once I've got that in there, I'll mix it for a second and I'm gonna go ahead and add in my goat's milk made from our goats here on our farm. So I literally milk our goats, put it in the fridge and then it goes in your soap, uh, which I, I like. It's a little bit of a you know, farm to soap studio. I would say farm to table, farm to shower. Does that sound weird? Farm to shower probably sounds weird. Anyway, as you can tell, since you're not hearing my stick blender, I'm re-recording this afterwards because when I initially recorded this audio, all you could hear in the background is my dryer. And it's so loud that it drove me crazy. So I am speaking over it now. Anyway, so I'm just gonna blend this um, past emulsion um, not even to trace, and then go ahead and add in my fragrance oils because I need this to stay really, really thin for this batter to seep in between all those eeny, weeny little tiny spaces I have inside that soap. So I'm not actually stick blending, I'm just mixing. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this all off and then go ahead and uh, get the colors mixed. All right, now that I've got that mostly wiped off, um, I don't actually usually like to leave my stick blender in there when I'm scenting because then it takes me longer to clean it off for the next soap. <laughs> and I'm a lazy soap maker and I only have one stick blender I like right now, which is that one I was just using. 
uh, which is a Cuisinart. So if you need a recommendation, that is my recommendation. The Cuisinart is the way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour a decent amount into this little pouring pitcher here and color it blue. Now my inspiration picture has kind of a very light foggy blue and I like it, but I wanted a little bit more contrast. So I asked Amy and she said, I absolutely was allowed to change, you know, some of the colors in my inspiration photo. Uh, so I initially went with this very dark blue and then I kind of wanted to try an ombre uh, and that, that doesn't really work out for me as you'll see in a minute, but at least this dark blue worked out really well. Um, it's a blend of Making Waves from Nurture Soap, Caribbean Blue, Midnight Blue, and then a dash of titanium dioxide. And this is why I don't normally try to tell you guys what colors I use because I end up using a million of them. So now that that's well blended, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in the first little bit here um, because I, I, like I said, I need this to stay super fluid. So, and I, like I said, I wanted to try to do the ombre. So I start at the bottom and like work my way up slowly. Um, and this goes pretty well for me. Uh, I'll go ahead and stop talking now and put on some music so you can just enjoy this pour. All right, so most of it's been poured and I'm coming back in again to talk about some places where I went wrong. So I'm not sure if you noticed, but there really isn't a huge difference between the middle and the bottom layer of the soap. I wish I had gotten it a little bit more light because then the transition to this top smoky blue layer is a little aggressive. Um, it will actually let me see if I like this better. So I don't totally mind it, but I wish I had done a, a better job at like a more subtle transition, but I was, so worried that this was gonna speed up on me that I was more interested in just getting it in the mold. So, but I did keep a little of the darker blue back as you'll see in a second in this cup, there's me checking all my spots, because I realized that I probably would have more holes. So I'm just using a little bit of the stuff that I used in the upper layer to just kind of fill in any holes or any possibility and kind of push down the other layer of soap. So I'm now gonna give it a bunch of good taps and you'll see some air bubbles popping up. So I'm glad I did this step. Super satisfying to see the air bubbles, by the way, when I'm tapping. I usually don't see this many. 
um, which again tells me that I obviously needed to do this. So I'm glad I did. All right, so it's later in the day. I poured this this morning pretty early, kind of nine-ish. It's now 5.30ish in the afternoon. So it's had a decent amount of time. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get it out of the mold. I'm not sure if I can, but we'll see. Well, maybe. I did pop it in the oven for a while to process. So, it feels pretty solid. Just there's a little bit of cocoa butter on the bottom. I try not to destroy my workstation despite much evidence to the contrary. So will you come out of here? Yeah. It's got like a weird icky layer of cocoa butter on the bottom, which I am not a fan of. That's all right. I'll just put that there. And uh, I'll let that, ew, I'm washing this. Probably shouldn't have used that much cocoa butter. All right, I'm gonna let that set for a little bit and then I'll come back and we'll cut it into eight bars and uh, give it a plane. All right, so I've cut them into mostly even bars and I'm, you see that kind of, I'm not gonna go ahead and plane um, cause they're pretty, pretty solid. And with this particular planing tool, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming all planing tools are like this, but I know for mine in particular, like you have to, um, you have to rotate it as you're planing it. Otherwise it'll kind of, I don't know, it'll do weird things to the bar. The bar will like get smaller on one side. I'm sure there's some math for that, but, oh, it looks really cool already. This is just so you guys can kind of see what's coming up out of the soap as I'm planing it away. But as I'm planing it each time, I'm rotating it and then checking it to make sure it's, not too deep. I don't have much farther to go. Maybe one more. This is where we are, so you guys can see. One more, you think? Let's do one more. Oh, cool. Oh, no, there's another cardinal back there. I did a couple more. All right, hold on, folks. I am seeing some air bubbles here and there, which annoys me because I tried very hard to not have air bubbles, but that uh, it's not to be. I have to do this part twice. All right. Oh, it looks really cool. All right, sorry, I'm just like sitting here admiring it instead of showing you guys, but hold on, let me. Just bevel the edges real quick. And I'm gonna wash this off, obviously, because it's still got a lot of, it's really soft, but that's the, uh, the finished look there. So, and that's the underside, so you can see it goes all the way through. Oh, they look so cool. All right, so I'm gonna do that to the rest of these, but I will turn some music on because this takes a while and it's probably kind of boring to listen to me talk about soap. So um, enjoy the music.
right, so I've beveled them down and given them a quick rinse, but look, that one's a little squished. But look how cool they, look at the shadows so you can actually see here, look. Look how cool they look. They look so cool. Oh, I'm so happy with that. Look how cool they are. They're so cool. I love them. Oh, I'm so happy. So I'm gonna let them dry overnight and then uh, we'll look at them tomorrow, but yeah, definitely not sad about this. They look great.